yeah, we don't miss a game. I think I've missed probably five home games in the last 25 years, something like that. Wow. Because um, I've, I, I've done the corporate mm -hmm. for 25 years. And when you think I did from 13 to 24, so I did 11 years, and I've done 25 corporates, so 36 years, I've been in and around Old Trafford for 36 years. And you can probably tell that's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a healthy looking diet I'm on, yeah. So you've been around Manchester United for a long time. You've seen many things change, Norman, in that time, many players come through. One of the biggest changes, I suppose, in the last uh, number of years is social media. And I'm sure there was lots of scrutiny uh, on your players in your day but how do you think you would have dealt with the social media by the way you're talking I would say you'd probably tell people a few home truths if you had social media whenever <laughs> you were 18 <laughs> um, I, I think I'm first and foremost I think I'm in favour of it because it's a way of a supporter getting a contact with the yeah. present pl day players because I hate to see when players arrive at the games and they brush supporters off because in our day we used to walk down to the dressing room and by the time you get in your suit was full of ink and black markers and you had to buy a new suit basically because you stood there and people are pushing pens and when I used to play let's put it this way I've got the I've got the vision where the, if you played at Anfield for instance and the cop are calling my name and slagging me off I've got I've got ears where I can filter now top players can filter what they want to hear now if the Stratford end are calling me Norman you're the, you're the best ever I'm 10 foot tall mm. I can I can bring that I can open my ears to that. I can tell me more, tell me more, and I'll be a better player. Someone's slagging you off. I don't hear it. I just blank it out. Really? I just blank it out. I don't I don't I don't know what they're saying. I just play football. But I can hear my crowd yeah. telling me I'm good. I can do that. So you know, in the same with the social media I I do all right in social media. I don't get slagged that much. Uh, but I, you know, we all get slagged off on social media but I think it's a nice way of supporters mm -hmm. getting, keeping in touch yeah. with, with their people that they want to... You I mean, some of it's a bit excessive and over the top, but I think it's a nice way for supporters from... from I mean, a lot of my Twitter and that are from, you know, all over the place. Yeah. Right? Indonesia, mm -hmm. Norway, everywhere. And um, it's a nice way of them to, you mm -hmm. know, even just to say hello. And, and I get people regularly sending me shirts and I send them back and sign them and, you do and too, pictures mm -hmm. and yeah it's a, gotta, but it's got to be done yeah, it's, it's got to be done so, I, so I think that I think that's it yeah absolutely I 100%. totally agree with that I totally agree what would be your highlights on the pitch probably a silly question probably the year 1982 was I, but I would always say Helen um, TM TM is too many to mention to be honest um and it is that you know I kept in Northern Ireland when I was twenty. I kept in Manchester United. I um, scored in three Wembley finals and played in two World Cups before twenty one. All these things. Is like that is a ridiculous list of things, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. by twenty one yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Too many, too many. So, and it just yeah. rattles off six, <laughs> five or six. Too many to yeah. mention. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good so, no, yeah. it's all that stuff. But yeah, there is about. I, I, I'm dead proud of the fact, yeah. but. I couldn't stick one out there and say, well, you know, it's like for 83, the semi final goal, two goes to Wembley, but then in 85, it's got the winner that wins you the goal. So it's like different, mm -hmm. got different values, but, but all very nice little mm -hmm. things to look back on. What about off the pitch? What about it? What are the big highlights? Waking it up, I suppose. Yeah. Um, that's, always a, oh, that's always a good always start. Always. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I can remember. Um, what I did in 85 but I can't remember what I did last night but <laughs> 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 no off the pitch I, I'm an easy going type of character to be honest um, so I enjoy myself I do lots of sporting dinners and I do the corporate at Old Trafford and do the museum tours and stuff like that so I'm, I'm sort of well grounded really um, but I enjoy a bit of, bit of crack um, but I love you know, just waking it up and going to Old Trafford um, is like a, you know, it's, it's say a dream, but it, it's it's a nice way to go to work. It certainly is. Uh, last question for you: If there's anybody that you used to play with, we've had uh, Robbo on. Who do you think would have really good stories? The funniest guy in our testing room would have been Gordon McQueen. He was hilarious. He just was. He just funny, funny, funny. You always have characters. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Gordy, Gordy, Big Gordon McQueen would be certainly one of the. Well, we'll have to do that one then. <laughs> yeah. Norman, That's thank you quite. so much. Cheers, Norman.
Cheers. Thank you. Brilliant. Helen. Thank you. Cheers, Amazing. Amazing. Brilliant. Cheers, Paul.
Manchester United face the German giant Bayern Munich. And what a lovely evening it looks there as well as the pre-season preparations continue for Mark Skinner's side. A great result last time out, wasn't it, against PSG, beating the French side 1-0 to advance to the final of this competition. And the WSL season, which kicks off in about three weeks' time, uh, gives us a lot of source for optimism. With me here in the Old Trevor studio, uh, former United player David Jones. Um, David, welcome along, mate. Um, we were all um, bewitched by the Lionesses' performance in the Euros, weren't we? And women's football continues to grow, and, and rightly so. But first of all, your thoughts on the England winning that tournament and the three girls of ours as well, who also contributed, Alessia Russo, Ella Toon and Mary Earps. None of them start tonight, but at least we might see Ella Toon is on the bench. But firstly, your thoughts on the Lionesses' performance? Yeah, just fantastic. Obviously, we're all aware of how well they played, um, the, the togetherness they showed to be able to come through the tournament and win it. So yeah, it's fantastic for women's football in general. And uh, yeah, great to see you know three or four players from this club being involved in that victory. Yeah, Nikita Paris, a new signing. Um, who is part of the squad does start tonight. We'll get the full team news uh, with Zara in just a second. Um, but as the pre-season continues, I mean, you've gone through many a pre-season, just second week or so of pre-season. What are you expecting to see? Um, well, judging on the other night, it was a good performance the other night from, from United and they'll just be looking to build on, on that in terms of their fitness and their performance. And um, although at this stage in pre-season, it's not about the result, but at any any stage, any game at this club, it's about getting results. So I'm sure they'll be looking to to finish this little competition that they've got uh, with a victory. Yeah, well, the performance against PSG was very good, beating them 1-0. Um, we can have a look at the goal, actually. It was uh, scored by our club captain, Katie Zellum, um, teed up by the new signing, uh, Lucia, and it was a lovely strike, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it into was... the bottom corner, outside of the right peg. That's good technique, that. Yeah, um, it was a great build-up really, starting in the middle of the pitch. Um, good pass to Staniforth, who uh, delays her pass, takes the time. We know she likes to come inside and link up. Good little pass, great set, and, a, and Zellum timed her run perfectly to be able to hit it first time. But there's a lot of good play there, a lot of good detail, good set, able to hit it first time right into the corner. So good team goal, showing really good quality there. Yeah, it certainly was. OK, we can get the team news next then, shall we? Because uh, out in France for us is Zara Connolly. Yes, I am here at the Stade Ernest Vallon, and now both teams are warming up. I've got Manchester United directly behind me, and it is an atmosphere here. The fans are crowding, and they cannot wait for the Women's French Cup final. But now it's time for your teams, so let's start off with Manchester United. Now, Manchester United will be in a 4-3-3 formation holding and at the back they have got Sophie Bagley. She pulled off a terrific save on Tuesday night. Now, in defence we have got Blundell, Torres Dottier, Letizia, now our new sign in there. She'll be wanting to make a great impact. We've also got Onabachie. Now, in the mid middle we have got Katie Zellum, our captain. She scored on Tuesday night. Could she score again? It's, she certainly made an impact. Now, either side of her, we've got Jade Moore and Jackie Gronham. And up front in our three, we have got Lucia Garcia, Adriana Leon, and Nikita Paris. Now, Nikita Paris, one of our newest signings, too. She'll be very happy to get that start, as all three of them will. And they'll be hoping to make an impact to impress the boss, Mark Skinner. And now, over to our opposition, Bayern Munich. They'll be in a 3-4-3 formation. Now at the back they've got Leipzig. They've got Raul, Vigo Satia, Kumagai. In the middle they have got Zadrazil, Glass, Simon and Lohman. And then up front in their three they have got Bull, Damhanovic and Magul. Now that is how both teams line up here in Toulouse. They'll be wanting to make the most of this last fixture here in France. Looking ahead to the new season it should be a great game. Yeah, thanks Zara. So uh, an opportunity to see plenty of the new signings. Uh, three of them up front uh, with Garcia, of course, Leon, the Canadian international as well, Nikita Paris. So again, in a pre-season when new players are gelling, how quickly can that happen and what will the manager be looking for in, in the new signings in that team? 
Um, well, as I said, it's very early in pre-season still, still a few weeks to the to the start of the season, but the manager will be working on different things in training and it'll just be good to see those connections um, during the game, see those understanding which players link up naturally well with each other. We saw that in the last game with the goal, there was good interplay from the new signing as well, Garcia. Um, so you're just looking to see those patterns, which players look to have connections with other players and see what what formation and what blend of players will um, will be the right blend come the start of the season. So it's important to be able to, you know, even though it's very early in, in the season, in pre-season, it's still good for the manager to be able to start to see these, these patterns in his team. And how important is a pre-season for that whole group to be away together and the new signings learn about the existing members and those other teammates just spending that time away as a group it's key really um, you know from my experience during pre-seasons that's when as you said with the new players they, they come in you have maybe a simple thing as such a night out a meal out um, you see each other all the time it's not just training and then go home so you're able to build those relationships uh, get to know them personally you know a lot better so it's important for off the pit, pit off the pitch stuff but also I'm sure the coach and the manager will have a lot of time to work with them on the pitch, so uh, it's vital in, in, in a number of ways. And I know it is um, basically just a friendly, but there is a little bit of silverware up for grabs. Um, this game could go to penalties if it finishes level yeah. after 90 minutes. And as a footballer, you would know better than I, David, but when you're on that pitch, there's the friendly sort of tag goes out the window, doesn't it? Particularly when there's a little bit of silverware up for grabs and you're playing in a a tournament like this against a magnificent mm. opponent like Bayern Munich, you, just, yeah. you want to win and you want to take that trophy home. Yeah, of course. Um, it's a great tournament with great clubs and they're playing a you know, real top European side with a great history. So, yeah, when, you, when it's Man United v Bayern Munich, um, it's a special game, you always want to win it. Um, of course, there's priorities such as fitness, players getting minutes, uh, looking to build yourself into pre-season, getting touches on the ball, getting your fitness, getting your spatial awareness of being back on a on a big field again, big pitch, getting that that awareness, uh, and as I said, um, making those new connections with with the new players. But it is Man United and it is Bayern Munich, and you want to win the game. Okay, so imagine a scenario: United are one up with um, a few minutes left, and ordinarily in a league game, the manager might be putting on subs to kill the game a little bit, mm. to waste time. Um, does he do that in a friendly? or do, what, can, will, will the manager and his staff, will Mark Skinner and his staff, be still uh, learning about the players and like a regular game, basically, he's sort of coaching themselves as well? I think so. I think so. Um, it's still important. There's a lot of good habits in winning games. That's still yeah. practising for the real season. So, although it's not the be-all and end-all and... You know, uh, it's not it's not determining what your season's going to turn out like. It's still important to get those good habits, so when it, then it can transfer to the league games, um, and you've had practice it in pre-season. So winning is always a part of football and an important part of pre-season as well, in my opinion. Yeah, some uh, mascots going out on the pitch there as well. Um, just wanted to uh, let viewers in the UK and Ireland know who are watching this with us that if you. Uh, we're looking for the under 21s coverage tonight. Uh, we are showing this game instead of that, but we will show you the goals from the under 21s game against Everton um, a little bit later. Uh, just some final thoughts then before we head over to the commentators. And it looks like there's a nice crowd there uh, over in France, and they have had some good support out there as Manchester United. No matter where you go, Man United's such a, a big draw, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we, you know how big the club is all over the world. The women's game's getting huge, and um, there's a lot of good talent on show. So we'll, it's an exciting game that I'm looking forward to. That's for sure. I bet you've got some good memories of uh, on tour with the United Journal, which we'll uh, which we'll share a bit later. But um, as you can see, the teams are about to emerge. Uh, so let's hand over to commentators, shall we? Uh, ben Thornley and Al McCorn. Thanks very much. Good evening, everyone. Manchester United in pre-season action tonight, but not only that, it's also a final of this pre-season cup competition, the Amos Women's Cup, a chance for some silverware to take back home to Manchester. Bayern Munich, the opposition, and Manchester United and Bayern Munich have some real history over the years, don't they? So too England against Germany, and you only need to look a few weeks back to see the most recent evidence the most recent instalment of that rivalry as the Lionesses defeated Germany in the final of the Euros at Wembley.
plenty of Manchester United presence on Wembley Way that night. Ella Toon etching her name into Lionesses folklore with that magnificent chip. The likes of Earps and Russo also involved in Nikita Paris too, a new signing for Manchester United. She gets her first run out this evening for Mark Skinner's side and it's a completely new look front three with Leon and Garcia also joining Nikita Paris. So here we go then, Manchester United versus Bayern Munich. It's the final of the Amos Women's Cup. It might only be pre-season, but the opportunity to win silverware is always one you'll want to take. Manchester United, the only side in this pre-season competition without Champions League experience. Bayern Munich, two times winners. PSG have played in the competition a number of times, and that's who United beat to get here. And Barcelona were the victims of Bayern Munich in their semi-final also on Tuesday. They too have played in the elite club competition on a number of occasions. So perhaps new territory for Manchester United as they look to crack the top three in the WSL this upcoming season. Begins on September the 10th, but for now, it's the south of France and Toulouse for Mark Skinner and his players. As they take on the Germans. Alongside me in the commentary box, former Manchester United man Ben Thornley. And as I was saying, Ben, not only is this a chance to get minutes in the legs, but also a chance to bring a trophy home as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pre-season and they've obviously pitted the wits against PSG, another one of the sides, along with the team they're playing tonight and, and Barcelona, we've also seen in this tournament that have got that experience of playing in the Champions League and that is what these girls in Manchester United shirts want to emulate next season. Chance of, you know, really finishing high up the league and getting that you know coveted spot in the in the Champions League but yeah most importantly for Mark Skinner is that he is getting minutes into the legs he's coming up against good opposition um, and you know moving closer to the start of the season picking his side and making sure key no injuries yeah absolutely essential Manchester United will want to hit the ground running and seven new additions to the squad this summer we might well see a few more but who knows, for now, it's a chance to try and build something in pre-season and get that momentum rolling before the season opener in a couple of weeks' time. You've spoken about character, desire, and a real winning mentality in this pre-season coming up against these sides like PSG, like Barcelona, like Bayern Munich. Give Manchester United a valuable experience against some of the best clubs in European football. New experience for him as well. Alexander Strauss, the new Bayern Munich coach. Always difficult in the Frauen Bundesliga, the top division of women's football in Germany to overcome Wolfsburg, who are the team to beat at the moment in Germany. But Bayern Munich will fancy their chances of not only beating Manchester United here, but also going the distance in their league campaign when that starts. Some seriously experienced players in their group. Just going to get some of the formalities out of the way. And I suppose, Ben, the question is, how long does it take for new signings to come in and try and get used to a group to try and settle in? Because even from what we saw a couple of days ago, some of the new signings like Letizia seem to slot in perfectly. Yeah, and that's just what you want. It's a dream as a manager when, you know, you do bring in players that you hope that they can integrate straight away, not just on the pitch, but off the pitch as well. That is, you know, that is key to, to having a, a harmonious team and, and, and having a successful season is that you've got all different players from, from different parts of Europe, but they're all coming together where it matters in the dressing room and then out onto the pitch. So it's not always an easy job, but when you do have, and you've just mentioned Maya Letizia there, who's coming and slotted in brilliantly. She's very experienced for such a young girl, so maybe, 
you know, he didn't have that much of a worry with her, but it is a slight worry for the manager when you do have so many people, and obviously he's got the girls coming back that were, you know, so brilliant in the Euros as well. So Bayern Munich against Manchester United then in the final of the Amos Women's French Cup. It's a pre-season tournament which is a multifunctional, I suppose you could say, for Mark Skinner in his preparations ahead of the new WSL season. So the latest instalments of England versus Germany is Manchester United against Bayern Munich in the final of this pre-season cup competition. That game at Wembley a couple of months ago. Absolutely sensational from the Lionesses who beat Germany to become Euros winners for the first time. Manchester United have Plenty of representation in that Lionesses squad. And plenty of the Germans on show on that night are also involved with Bayern Munich, so it should be an interesting test. Bayern just trying to settle down nice and early team that does like to keep the ball certainly in the midfield region on Tuesday against PSG Manchester United had to really battle there were chances at either end but a touch of brilliance from the captain Katie Zellen was the difference a delicate finish with the outside of her right boot and that's something that Mark Skinner has highlighted there's plenty of quality in this Manchester United side to find those moments when they need them yeah man, it was a it was a really good finish I have to say you know she took it early knew exactly what she was doing with it, just sort of with the outside of her foot, bottom corner. It was enough to win the game. But they do have quality all over the place and, you know, new additions, Nikita Paris being one on the field at the moment. Adriana Leon, very experienced Canadian international. And, uh, you know, they're working hard here to, to stop the Germans from, from playing through the midfield. Not really made much of it yet. Free kick goes by a Munich's way. This evening's referee is Emmeline Rochevillier. Oh, Lohman switch chased down by Lucia Garcia, and it's come here for Katie Zellum. That's really good from United. It is to reduce the Germans to playing the long ball, which is exactly what they want. And there's Katie Zellum in the perfect place to be picking up the balls, positions that she takes up really, really well in the centre of that pitch, just mopping up behind the, the front three. Yeah, United playing a 4 3 3 tonight. Four changes from the side that beat PSG 1 0 on Tuesday evening. In that game against Paris Saint-Germain, it was uh, a 4-2-3-1 that Mark Skinner deployed, so maybe slightly different tactics, but even though the forward three are all new players, Nikita Paris, Adriana Leon and Lucia Garcia, they're all players who are more than capable of hurting the Germans. There is Leon getting her foot in early. I've never actually met Mark Skinner now, but I, I have, you know, seen many, many of his interviews and, and my colleague or our colleague Stuart Gardner has interviewed him on numerous occasions and his his enthusiasm is is really infectious and he firmly believes that, you know, he's putting together a squad that can, you know, ch challenge the, you know, the arsenals and the cities of this world domestically and and the, the Leons and, you know, Barca's and Bayerns who were playing tonight in, in Europe. Yeah, you're right, a bundle of positivity, it's fair to say. When it comes to Mark Skinner, his second season now as United coach, he stressed the importance of the home support last term at Lee Sports Village in the WSL. And he'd love to see more faces down there this season. So if you are local to Lee and you've perhaps been inspired by what you saw in the Euros this summer, 
and why not get yourself over there for a game it'll be very much appreciated I'm sure just want to hit that from Torres Dottier she doesn't want to get dragged out there on too many an occasion centre backs near the touchline is not always great leaves a gaping hole in the middle well, I wonder how much Benz has been flying around the changing room between the members of the Manchester United squad who were involved in that Lionesses team that absolutely demolished Maria Torres Dotti's Norway side. Conceded eight to the Lionesses in the Euros. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to resist a little uh, a little slide dig, would you? Or or eight maybe. <laughs> Manchester United on the attack here. This is Jade Moore. And Hrunen collects. Tucked out of play in the end by Lena Magul, but nice little touch there from Jackie Hrunen. cleared away headed off the 18 yard line flicked back towards goal and Leon was the closest United player to it didn't quite run for her that was a clever little flip though wasn't it just to try and catch the Bayern Munich defenders coming out in the hope that they were a little bit too slow and there she is on the press again Bayern trying to play the, their way out with Kumagai launched forward Tizier is there, so to Torres Dotti. Takes no chances. This is Lohman. Here goes Dotti. They will just have to be careful, won't they? Especially giving set pieces away because they're a tall side by Munich. Yeah, plenty of presence in the Bayern Munich ranks. A couple of times they've tried that long ball in this opening salvo in Toulouse. Letizier and Torres Dotti, the preferred centre-back partnership for Mark Skinner, but when everyone's fit and available, he will have options. The likes of Aoife Mannion is currently nursing a knee injury in the stands here in Toulouse tonight. Blundell thought she was being pulled there. Was looking to the referee for a little bit of help, but none coming. Blundell and Demjanovic going at it, and the Serbian for Bayern Munich penalised. Blundell managed the game really well on Tuesday night against PSG someone who's so consistent has European experience herself actually with Chelsea Hannah Blundell here she is again Hrunen slightly loose come back for Bayern Munich is Rawl away by Jade Moore good defensive work by Hrunen and Nikita Paris can take a couple of touches slightly loose from Manchester United but they get the job done defensively in the end it's good, de good defensive work that from Jackie Grunen Yeah, played very well against PSG. Did Jackie Hrunen and still searching for that elusive first Manchester United goal. Could tonight be the night for the Dutch international. Still ample time to go into the 10th minute here in the Amos Women's French Cup. Still goalless, no real chances to speak of for either Bayern or Manchester United.
Loman. Plenty of space in midfield here for Damjanovic. Yeah, it's a good pass that from Loman. Oh, scampering back there. Lucia Garcia playing on the left of a front three. Nikita Paris playing on the right. Signed for Manchester United recently from Arsenal, Nikita Paris. Mark Skinner says she brings a pedigree of winning, having previously been at Manchester City and Lyon as well. Always useful to add to the group when you have the experience of winning games. Kumagai. Vigo's not here. Zellum. 
Letizia. Slightly loose that from Adriana Leon. Still probably just getting her bearings, getting used to being a part of this Manchester United group. They are a tight-knit squad. Very close. She's not got on the ball at all yet, Nikita Paris, but what she is doing is making life very difficult for, for the German back three. She's putting them under a lot of pressure, and it's the angles with which she's closing down that's making life difficult for them. Well, still goalless here in the south of France. Bayern Munich nil, Manchester United nil. As the sun tucks behind the horizon. In perfect conditions for warm weather training for Manchester United this week here in Toulouse. Damjanovic up against Torres Dotti. The Norwegians standing her ground well. the delivery and Bagley just has to make sure by palming away from her goal came through a crowd of bodies her vision would have been obscured but she did what she had to do and tips it behind for a corner yeah it's the first real decent ball that the, the Germans have put into the box and I have to say that she probably thought Bagley that there was going to be a touch in there and left a dive until a little bit late, which obviously forced her to have to push it away rather than keep hold of it and drag it in. Yeah, Maximilian Rule was there, forward from the back for Bayern. Set piece comes in, Bagley gets something on it. Chance to recycle here for Bayern. Dangerous delivery, nodded away. Leon does what she needs to do to ensure that Manchester United can clear their lines. Goalkeepers yeah. come out far as well here. Yeah, that's the first warning I mentioned earlier about the distinct height advantage that Germany possess. Germany. Bayern Munich, I apologise. Well, there's a lot of German <laughs> internationals. But you, we are relying, and Manchester United will be relying on, you know, the commitment of Sophie Bagley to get up above and punch away if there's one person that can out jump this tall by munich side it is going to be her yeah as you say some significant height in the bayern side maximilian rule who was forward for the header before that corner that sophie bagley pushed behind five foot eleven just a shade under six foot in fact so Certainly threat from a set-piece situation, you'd have to argue. And by what we've just seen, good delivery as well, especially from the right-hand side in swinging, left-hand side, sorry. Here's Burl for Bayern Munich. Run, runs into traffic, but... Still, the red shirts keep possession. Damjanovic hoists it high. No one at the back post for Bayern. Ajay will clear. She just needed a little bit of help there, Badji. You could obviously see that she was going to volley clear. People needed to get across to at least try and take the ball down and make a challenge. Another nice switch from Simon and... Bayern Munich are just starting to impose their authority on this game. Knocking the ball about nicely. Trying to make Manchester United chase. And here it comes for Clara Burt. Gets beyond Badgier. Headed away, but the shot came in from Lohmann. Not troubling Sophie Bagley, thankfully, from a Manchester United perspective. But that was well put together by Bayern Munich. Yeah, little ball into the front and then... The extra man, or the extra woman, I should say, over on this side. Was Bull. It was a really good header, actually, by Anna Blundell. And as 
as you say, Niall, they are starting to put a few things together now, Bayern Munich. Leon. Foul there by Kuma Guy. So much experience. Japanese international since 2008. Saki Kuma Guy, still only 31, but more than 120 Japan caps. Feels like she's been around for an eternity already. One of the most successful Asian footballers of all time. Saki Kuma Guy, multiple time Champions League winner. winner with Lyon, World Cup winner with Japan. These are the sorts of defenders and the sorts of players that Manchester United will be coming up against if they did qualify for the Champions League. So if you wanted a test in pre-season, why not test yourself against some of the best? Yeah, it's a really good test for them. It is, you know, this is the, you know, the sort of position that these girls in white shirts want to aspire to. They want to be in the Champions League. They want to be playing at the top table, as do the men. And this is a really, really good test. I know that you shouldn't read too much into pre-season, but this will just give them a taste of the sort of opposition they could come up to face should they finish in the top three in the Women's Super League. And I think with the WSL, Ben, as well, the quality in terms of those top three places, there's almost more teams in the WSL than in the German league, for example, going for those Champions League places. Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester City, Manchester United. You've got Tottenham coming through as well. So competitive. Won't be easy. No, it won't be. It won't be. In comes the delivery. Leon's lurking at the back post. Moore is up there. Away by Kumagai. Headed forward by Badget. Brought down by Leon. Poke through here for more. Good chance for United. It just flashed across the face of goal. No one in white was close enough to convert. What a shame, because this is a lovely touch here from Leon. Just this one there, right into the path of Jade Moore. And perhaps just too much on it. It was just a little bit too straight. It needed to be angled. Perhaps a little bit taken off it. Nikita Paris, the closest United player to it. Was fizzed across by Jade Moore. There wasn't really much in that, considering some of the things that the referee has let go. I think that's the case that Manchester United are trying to make. Play resumes. This is Simon. Closed down well by Garcia. Still finds its way to the feet of Magul. Now oh, Clunan has it for Manchester United. Well, you can hear Mark Skinner down on the touchline just leading for calm that's what his players showed there yeah it was really good bad yet oh it's a shirt a, yeah having a shirt pulled but she continues assistant's got to spot that and you'd have hoped that would have been pulled back for a free kick yeah but they did get out of that difficult spot really well one touch accurate passing moving it from one side to the other so that you can break yourself out good pick out that from Zellum comes back here for Badge Harris gets it under control Moore makes a run picked out by Badge and across too close to the goalkeeper Leipzig at the near post and again, Manchester United trying to use this right side to break through Bayern Munich. Yeah, and once again, it's Jade Moore. A decent weighted pass, just like the one from Leon earlier. And again, just needs to be, to be fair to her, she didn't have as much room to be able to wrap her foot round it when the ball drifting over the touchline. But an angled ball was the one there if she could have even dug it out and, and chipped it to the far post. 
would have created a little bit of mayhem. Lucia Garcia here for Manchester United. Well, neatly done. Touched on by Zellum. United can't keep control of the ball, though. It's come here for Lohman. I'll try and burst into United territory. That's a good pick out as well. Clara Bull. Nice controlled clearance that from Torres Dotti. bench one to foul there it was Leon who went to ground yeah there's a little bit of afters there I think big off dot here well Mark Skinner asking the question on the touchline back with the United now though here's Hrnan Torres dot here More. Back with Bagley. Just trying to spring Nikita Paris free over the top. Yeah, you can see the experience of Kumagai. She's solid back there, that is for sure. Plays the position well. Good header that from Torres Dotti. Possession back for Manchester United. Oh, it's good footwork, but doesn't amount to anything in the end for Bayern Munich. Letizia was alert to that. She did really well. It was a clever piece of footwork. Pass on the end of it, could have caught him cold. Well, this game has been closely contested as we approach the half-hour mark here in Toulouse. Sophie Bagley with just the one save to make, tipping it around the post. United have got down the right a couple of times as well, trying to threaten by a Munich's box. No goals to speak of as yet. Oh, she allowed that to go. Yeah, I thought she did. Yeah, Damjanovic just overrunning that. Assistance flag was up immediately. Not happy with herself there, Jovana Damjanovic. Now you can see. Once she looked back where the ball was, it was just slightly too late. Serbian international Jovana Damjanovic. One of a number of Bayern Munich players who used to play for Wolfsburg. Team to beat in Germany at the moment. Two time Champions League winners, Wolfsburg. Pipped Bayern to the Frauen Bundesliga last year as well. Bayern finishing second, four points back from Wolfsburg. really in that German top flight it's between the three teams Wolfsburg, Bayern Munich and Eintracht Frankfurt not to denigrate the quality though there are some other very handy teams in that division as we mentioned before maybe not quite at the level of the WSL in terms of the amount of teams that could mount a charge for those Champions League positions just having a word here with Gloris Pele Vigo's dot here. Yeah, because that's a booking. Yes. It, it, 
all day. Yeah, and it's a booking. I mean, sensible refereeing. We are, you know, still in pre-season. It's essentially a friendly. Doesn't fancy the paperwork, I don't reckon. <laughs> well, that is a that is a definite booking. Here's Badger. And again, Kuma Guy just using her body and her experience to ensure Jade Moore can't get anywhere near that ball. Yeah, she's certainly been. One of the more assured performers in a in a red shirt. You can see that she's got the experience. She's very very comfortable on the ball and knows the position well. just like to see Manchester United playing a little bit further up the pitch they've just you know in the last sort of you know five or ten minutes they've been pushed back and the the forcing errors and giving the ball away in key areas and because they're playing so deep Germany uh, Germany I'm saying it again apologize it's those by, white United by, shirts, by, isn't it? <laughs> by Munich are, are, are picking it up in areas that you know, United really don't want them running at them in. And, uh, there's, a, there's a reluctance when they do turn the ball over to play forward straight away and to try and catch Bayern Munich out. Important touch that from Torres Dott here. Yeah, and a short touch as well, the second one. But you're right then, I agree. And it's a case in point that we've not really seen too much of Paris, Leon or Garcia on the ball for Manchester United. No. There's been flashes, but no sustained periods of pressure. Yeah, they're not really being, you know, brought into the game because of where Manchester United are, are trying to operate. And from the start of the game, they were putting the German back, Bayern Munich back three under all sorts of pressure. If I say Germany one more time, now. I'm not sure how I can help you. I know you can. I know you can. It's a lovely touch that from Torres Dot here. Seymour. Cool. Sydney Lohman unmarked in the middle here. Yeah. Lohman strike and it was a fizzing one. Sophie Bagley was aware of the danger and it came in with pace and venom and in the end it's over the top. And that's really where the ball before it went out wide should have gone first time. She was completely free, Lohman. Moves the ball just to the right hand side but slightly leaning back Not a million miles away from Bayern Munich trying to box Manchester United in here and Mark Skinner's side build something from the back here with Badger nicely done by Nikita Paris the six yard line as far as Jade Moore here for United Zellum I think with Onabadje they do have a, a real real useful outlet she's a strong runner she can take players on she's here again oh Badje Touch from Hrnan, just trying to take it round the corner. Too much traffic in the penalty area. And here comes Lohmann for Bayern Munich, and a good chance here for Damjanovic. And well saved by Bagley. Still an opportunity in a way at the near post by Torres Dottit. Well, defensively, Manchester United had to get that spot on. And the combination of Bagley and Torres Dottit made sure that they did. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I thought she could have gone by herself. Boo. Really 
good break. She'd already got away from, I think it was Jade Moore that was chasing her back. But she did well, Bagley. It was still a good pass from Bull to find Damjanovic, but she was alert to it. And then, as all good defenders do, keeper has to commit themselves to come out. You get back on the goal line and do what you can. And that's exactly what Torres Dottier did. Ten minutes to go until half-time. Bayern Munich just starting to... ...flex their muscles here in Toulouse. It's underneath Bagley's crossbar. Punched away. And now Paris. Can United launch a counter-attack? Leon just... ...loses her footing. Meanwhile, Paris... ...I think got caught in the... ...melee there. 100% sure what happened, but she seems in a bit of discomfort there. Your knee contact, yeah. and they don't look painful, but I can assure you they hurt. <laughs> a little nutmeg from Nikita Paris, she'll probably be disappointed that given all that space she had to work with, that she couldn't pick somebody else out in a white shirt. Not doing the defensive work there. Trying to get United on the counter-attack. But again, good work from Sophie Bagley as well, Nile underneath the crossbar. We've seen corner from the right, and now we've seen one from the left, so we know that they put in very, very useful corners, so they are going to be, you know, reliant upon her to, to be punching away, and she's done it on both occasions she's been asked to. Yeah, Sophie Bagley made some really important saves against PSG on Tuesday. A big one-on-one -on -one save in that game made a big one-on-one -on -one save a few moments ago as well punched it away from under her crossbar in that clip you're seeing now and then Nikita Paris back on her feet after that coming together because of the confidence that Alexander Strauss the German coach has got with their set-piece deliveries especially from corners like that she's going to be under a terrific amount of pressure Sophie Bagley and she's coped well with it from both sides. Well, I don't think Manchester United will mind this brief pause in play too much as Bayern were just starting to put their foot on the gas in the five minutes before that. And Mark Skinner just relaying some instructions. Okay. And we've not really seen much of Katie Zellum, who, as we know, is fairly influential. This Manchester United team, that's why she's the skipper. But the game in the last 20 minutes has not just bypassed her, but has bypassed most of the players in white shirts. And as like you said, Niall, Bayern Munich turned the screw a little bit. Well, Nikita Paris, I have to walk off to the sideline. She's received some treatment. But United do have options on the bench if they need them in this pre-season game. It is a final of a cup competition, but it is pre-season, so difficult balancing act for the coach, Mark Skinner. Obviously, will be desperate to win, but probably slightly edged out by the fact he wants to keep a fully fit and healthy squad heading into the new season. Likes of Hansen and Galton and Thomas all on the bench, Ella Toon as well, amongst the substitutes. there will be an introduction after the break at some stage because of you know players that he wants to give a little bit of game time to and because at this moment in time the system that he's got is not quite working with this personnel against this very assured Bayern Munich side but she's definitely been one plus on a bad Jake defensively and offensively really well done by Nikita Paris she's got Kumagai on the back foot here but the Japanese veteran recovers expertly just when you thought that Paris might have the upper hand there was Kumagai really good tackle perfectly timed comes here for Simon down calmly by Katie Zellum, almost too calmly one might argue. 
to clear it away. Yeah, it was a really good first touch. It had my heart in my mouth a little bit with the second one. Passing it back to the keeper there from no, in between three Bayern Munich players. <laughs> she got it spot on. Sophie Bagley taking no chances.
that happens in the second half now, I think, you know, the message from Mark Skinner is that we need to get the ball fall, oh, forward sooner. I mean, we saw one ball, didn't we, in the first half from, I think it was Mayor Letizia that was hit right down the, the right channel for, for Badje to go and chase. And United got a corner out of it. There's nothing wrong with that if you have got that, that accuracy to be able to find a long distance pass. And we just haven't seen it since. Zdrazil, Damjanovic, snuffed out by United. 30 seconds of the minimum added one minute at the end of this first half to play. This is Nikita Paris, sliced away by Bayern. It's going to fall favourably for them as well as Zdrazil picks up. United had repelled Bayern up till that point. The Germans did just begin to turn the screw and they've got a goal to show for it at the break. Half time here in Toulouse. Bayern Munich 1, Manchester United 0.
and if we've time before the players come out, we'll have a look at back at that first half a little more. sure they'll be in a friendly we'll see Mark's going to make a number of changes and hopefully his side can get back level and indeed go on and win the game in the second half what are you expecting to see in the second half David? Um, I think because it's a pre-season game there'll be probably changes of personnel um, I think we'll probably see United try and break their press a bit more effectively maybe get it down the sides of the Bayern and defence test their back three down the sides um, try and get the ball up quickest and have more sustained pressure in their half that's what I'd like to see in the, in this second half from a United point of view but Bayern's shape has been really interesting you know it's the way they set up yeah it has um, you know when United actually have had good possession they've dropped back into almost like a back five and a four and a one made it really difficult condensed the space not allowed United's creative players to get into those gaps and then when they break they break quite quickly and they're f when they turn into that three four three two of their front three drop in and make a little box in midfield either side of Zellum which makes it very difficult for Zellum to be able to get across and block passing lanes for those two players so then it's been really difficult for United at times to be able to win the ball back when Bayern regain possession in their own half. Yeah it's interesting to see how the uh, patterns of the game emerge like that but uh, as you see we're kicked off so let's hand back to commentators Ben and Niall. Thank you, gents. Yeah, back underway here in Toulouse, Manchester United, trailing by a goal to nil in the Stade Ernest Vallon. 
was a goal that Sophie Bagley couldn't quite keep out. There have been changes made at half time. See one of them here, Leah Golton, has been introduced. I'll try and bring you those changes as soon as possible. As Adriana Leon goes to ground, she's still on the pitch, of course, was withdrawn in the game against PSG. Bayern Munich as well have made some substitutions. Leah Schuler has come on for Jovana Damjanovic. Talk about the change with intent. Leah Schuler, 16 goals last season. The, those are the two changes. Golton and Staniforth introduced. Garcia and Paris taken off. Incidentally, Bayern Munich made a host of changes at halftime in their semi-final against Barcelona. They won that by two goals to one, and it was someone who's on the bench for them, Emmeline Laurent, who scored the winner with six minutes to go against the Catalan side. Skinner. United searching for a route back into this one. Well, in order to get your substitutes into the game, because obviously the offensive ones, United definitely, as I said in the first half, they need to start playing a little bit further up the pitch. They allowed themselves to be pushed too far back by Bayern Munich. And when they did manage to turn the ball over, they gave it away very cheaply. So they'll be looking to the likes of Adriana Leon to be able to get hold of it and bring Staniforth and Galton into play. I just think that the Germans were allowed to, to play through was a little bit easy after the first 10 or 15 minutes and it didn't come as a surprise when they took the lead, they deserved it. It was just how it came about which was unfortunate for Sophie Bagley. And Bayern Munich looking threatening again here with Zetrazil. It's low and it's in the back of the net. Manchester United conceded just before half-time and now they've conceded just after it. A nightmare start to the second period. Cross came into the near post and in a flash, the Germans double their lead, 2-0. Well, it was Zadrazil who picked up that ball in the midfield and she makes the run across the near post and from a very, very acute angle. Sorry, it was Zadrazil that crossed the ball in. It was actually... Magul, isn't it? Magul, yeah. yeah. She was the one who picked the ball up in the centre of the park. Zadrazil down the outside. And that's disappointing defending, I have to say. And again, maybe... Sophie Bagley might have a look at herself. I know it was came at her quite fast, but she was beaten at a near post from a, a really, really acute angle. And it's not a great start to the second half for Manchester United, and it's a poor goal to concede. Yeah, two goals, five minutes apart, either side of half-time, and that puts Bayern Munich firmly in control of this pre-season cup competition in Toulouse. Lena Magul, who scored the Germany equaliser with just 11 minutes to go at Wembley in the European Championship final. Ella Toon had handed England the lead in that game. And here's a look at that goal again. In comes the ball from Zadrazil. And almost a stooping header from Lena Magul, but too good for Bagley and for Manchester United. Yeah, she was well beyond that near post when she took that header on. It really shouldn't have been allowed to creep inside that near post with or without a deflection off the body of the goalkeeper. Well, often
often a target on a badge not just for Manchester United and they're looking to go forward but also for opposition players as well she's a nuisance to defenders Bagley on the back foot here and she's given it away Sophie Bagley chance for three for Bayern Munich and able to capitalize shaky times for United here Emilian Rawl, I think, who was all the way forward for Bayern Munich. for Leah Goulton that would have halved the deficit at a vital time really for Manchester United to strike straight back it was really good build up play Cronin's cross and Goulton just didn't get the connection she so desperately needed now it was a little bit like the, the Bayern Munich first goal it was on a badge this time that tried to perform the Cruyff which did the Bayern Munich defender and Jackie Cronin picked up the ball and it was a wonderful ball in plenty of pace and it's a bad miss from Leah Golden. I know that she's new to the game, but she would have welcomed that chance, I'm sure, to have the deficit. And it's a poor miss. Well, again, if there are going to be errors in judgment, mistakes, and maybe a lack of ruthlessness, you want to get that out of the way in pre-season. United still content to go forward. Uh, played against Kumagai and it will be a corner. And again, Badjay's in the thick of the mix again. Lucy Staniforth having a few words, newly introduced as a substitute. She'll start sharing some of her experience with Badjay. It's a United corner and they're always dangerous when Katie Zellum stood over them. from Zellum but it's too close to the goalkeeper Leipzig chance had gone in you wonder how the complexion of this game might just have shifted slightly those two goals just sucking the life out of Manchester United a little still plenty of time left though in this one pre-season here in the south of France the Amos Women's French Cup giving United an opportunity to test themselves against opposition they wouldn't normally face as well as getting some important minutes in the legs here's Staniforth nice turn Leon digs out across falls for Goldson and now Blundell oh, good strike Schuller 
It's a good pass for Zitras. Hill. Maximilian Brawl forward again from the back. Unable to claim, but it's back here with Zadrazil. And here is Rawl, across it comes. And headed back calmly by Katie Zellum. And Bayern again showing what they're capable of going forward. A decent body movement on that touchline. And Katie Zellum was very calm and composed to knock that ball back. But again, just the... Munich players just being afforded a little bit too much time and space. It's a good run from Blondell. Pulled for her second time around. No, she wanted the ball back inside, didn't she? One of those Luke Shaw runs that he's so good at when he comes running infield from that left back position. it in the middle of the park there. Bayern standing firm. United too much, they're quite calm when they have possession of the ball. It's a really difficult test this for United. Yeah, listen, as, as most teams are in Germany across the board, you know, they, they play to a system, they're all affiliated with that. I think that might have been a touch of offside. They're so disciplined, aren't they? They are, yeah, they're, they're very disciplined. You know, almost robotic at times, but it's effective and United are, are finding it very very difficult to get the ball off them and to find any sort of momentum well, Clara Vu, who scored the opening goal for Bayern Munich is going to come off here to be replaced by Emmeline Laurent Linda Dolman is also coming on McGill the other goal scorer for Bayern she's also being withdrawn uh, significant changes here being made by coach Alexander Strauss and Julia Gavin is also coming on someone who started in that Euro final against England a couple of months back so a front three now for Bayern comprised completely of substitutes Blundell once more. 
it's well worked down the left side just couldn't get it out of her feet could she Leah Golden terrific left foot she's got unfortunately a letter down a few moments back probably the well it was without question United's best chance of the game so far you can see how compact by Munich get when United look like they're about to attack and as soon as they turn the ball over the three centre halves immediately split and the wing backs go out towards the touchline they are I think you're quite right now to use that word, very disciplined. Well, slightly loose on that occasion from Kumagai. Leon gets in there, this is Zellum, but straight away you see red shirts back behind the ball. Yeah. Golton pops it off for Zellum, now it's Blundell. Is calling for it inside the penalty area. One of them was Krönen. Away by Bayern. Zetrazil. Here's Emmeline Laurent. And Blundell showing her out for a corner, but you can see straight away the threat that Emmeline Laurent poses. Not really had too much of the ball since her introduction five or so minutes ago, but certainly has that directness which will cause defences problems yeah decent pace about her and Hannah Blundell has started this second half as well as anybody especially going forward but now Emeline Laurent is going to give us something to think about going the other way Bayern corner headed back across and defensive headers from Zellum Chance for Gvin to redistribute. Well, Mark Skinner really going for it now. Jackie Hrenen, the central midfield player from the Netherlands, is taken off for Ella Toon, who scored against Germany in the Euro final with an audacious chip, a slightly more attacking central midfielder than Jackie Kronen. Draws applause from those members of the United Barmy Army who have made the trip. Follow everywhere for those passionate Red supporters. And Martha Thomas is on now as well. Someone who certainly occupies defenders at the heart of the Manchester United attack. So Toon and Thomas on to try and salvage something here. Well, like by Munich now, Manchester United have got a completely new front three on the pitch. And can they cause the three central defenders of Bayern Munich any more problems than the three did in the first half? You'd like to think so. Especially seeing as though they are the same three playing at the back for Bayern Munich that, you know, must be getting on for two thirds of the way through the game, starting to tire a little bit. Well, the header's down and flashed into the back of the net by Saki Kumagai. Well, at the back, she's led by example, and now at the front, she's contributing to 3 0 Bayern. And just as I say that, probably the, the most, well, the outstanding player on the pitch for me, who's definitely caught my eye, Saki Kumagai. Been outstanding at the back, very assured, and then comes in on the blind side. Keeps her eye on a spinning ball as well. How many times have you seen those, you know, come off the top of somebody's boot or off their shin? Well, she kept her eye on it. And she smashed it home. Eight years at Lyon, Saki Kumagai joined Bayern in 2021. She won five Champions Leagues during her time at Lyon. 
She'll be hoping to achieve great things with this Bayern Munich side as well in this upcoming season on the score sheet here. Been a Japan international since 2008, but it took her until 2019 to score her first goal for her country. Blundell slides in Golton. It's a low cross away by Kumagai. Comes here for Blundell. Could think about shooting. Instead, knocks it off for Zellen. This is Ella Toon who can hit them from distance. Just a little sighter to adjust the radar for Ella Toon. Scored some absolute crackers for Manchester United in the past. It's the club's all time record goal scorer, in fact, Ella Toon. off target on that particular occasion but I'm I am actually trying to think now we now are two-thirds of the way through this match has Leipzig in the Bayern Munich goal had a save to make yet which you know even for all Bayern's dominance that's going to be a slightly disappointing statistic considering he's now had six forwards on the field and when you think that, you know, Katie Zellum is more than capable of finding the back of the net, that'll be a disappointing start for Mark Skinner that they've not tested the goalkeeper after nearly 70 minutes of the game. Yeah, Manchester United's best chance came right after Bayern had made it 2-0 with Leah Goldson, who just couldn't find the finish. It's a well-worked move, but couldn't apply that finishing touch. And if that had gone in for 2-1, you just wonder how the game might have changed. But... Those are the if, buts and maybes and the fine margins in this game. So easy to look back retrospectively and address problems, and try and solve them, but that's what the best teams do. They find a way to win, they find a way to punish you. Zellum. Dalton might be in here. Can't get there ahead of... Nina Leipzig. That's not a bad ball though. Something that I wish they'd, they'd certainly done more in the first half, but now they do have the the pace of, of Leah Golden to be able to get in behind, but it's good goalkeeping from Leipzig. She was alert to the danger. It's a beautiful raking pass from Staniforth. Touched off well by Ella Toon. Lofted into the penalty area, away by Bayern Munich. Moore will get to this first. She's worked really hard, Jade Moore, without much reward, I have to say. Toon. Staniforth could be in here, but again, combination of Kumagai and Leipzig rushing out. Puts a stop to any Manchester United danger. And it's better since the third goal. We've seen two or three really useful passes. It might be a case of too little, too late, but as you pointed out already during our commentary, Niall, that you know mistakes like those are best made now. Results like this are best had now. And they are playing a very good side. Yeah, let's not forget that. No. United the only side in this pre-season tournament with no Champions League experience. I think Bayern have won it twice, Barcelona winners a couple of years ago, PSG as well, consistently in the Champions League. Manchester United yet to get there, but that is the aim. And it all begins on the 10th of September for Mark Skinner's side away at Tottenham, at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Doesn't really get much bigger than that in terms of a curtain raiser. Tottenham, one of the sides, along with United, looking to crash that Champions League party. See, it's just things like that. You know, Jade Moore has the ball there and she elects to go back when she's got the whole pitch opening out in front of her. And she could quite easily make that pass. She doesn't need to pass the ball backwards. 
is Toon. And she wants a foul. She's not going to get one from the referee, Emmeline Rocher-Billiet. Bayern on the attack again. It's going to open up here for Laurent. It's got plenty of space to work with. Stabs her ball across and the header from Leah Schuller. It's always going to be difficult to guide on target. Yeah. It was a poor pass that in the end. It's just too far in front of Laurent. And it was Schuller who made the break and she ended up getting back on, on the end of the, the cross from Laurent. It was a poor pass initially from her, just over hit, it wasn't, wasn't difficult, just need to play it in the space for it to go and hit it first time. It wasn't the easiest header to direct on target from Leah Schurler, but she certainly knows where the target is. Fired by into the title in 2020-21. 16 goals, 16 again last season. In the Frauen Bundesliga. Dot here for Bayern Munich. This is Saki Kumagai, scorer of Bayern's third goal. Certainly, one thing I have noticed with Bayern is the ball speed. They pop it around really quickly with real intensity and fizz on the passes. Yeah, they're all confident in each other's ability. from the front. One back by Blundell. Moore finds Zellum who in turn feeds Martha Thomas. And this is Staniforth onto her left. Just about got enough boot on it to try and poke it in Leah Golton's direction. This time Toon with a loose pass forward. Just not happening for Manchester United in the final third. seem to have an answer for everything. So compact defensively. No, their rules really well. Manchester United will get the chance to play at Old Trafford again this season. December's clash against Aston Villa penciled in to take place at the Theatre of Dreams. It's only the third time that United have played at Old Trafford, but of course some of United's Lionesses will have experienced it packed out to the rafters at the beginning of that successful Euros campaign. changes well, I suppose when you have a three goal cushion with 15 minutes to go and it is pre-season after all you need to make sure you Enable some minutes for other players and Maximilian Hall and Zetrazil are also, she's also off as is Vigo Stott here. Ket is on and Landenberger is on and also Rudelic.
right for Manchester United in that midfield, but Jade Moore certainly a battler. Yeah, she's she's got real qualities about her that you do need to play in that engine room. Nothing wrong with her fitness. She has got about the pitch and she's been as combative as anybody in a white shirt, I have to say, with no reward. She's up there again. She's getting up and down well, Jade Moore. Alongside uh, Zellum and Kernan in that midfield three to start the game. Kernan since gone off with Ella Toon introduced. Christmas of the passing. 
Coleman. This comes in from the left now. Kumagai. This is Hannah Glass. The pass was fizzed into Leah Sherlock. Couldn't control it. Always a danger when you see a scoreline like this in pre-season that the energy just tends to drain out of the game a little bit. Yeah. Both teams have got, you know, fresh legs on there very recently. But it's more a psychological thing that so little time left in such a big gulf in the scoreline. Dalton and Laurent going at it. Dalton wins the battle. Zellum, who scored Manchester United's only goal against PSG, proved to be the winner. It was a really nice finish with the outside of the right boot, but United have struggled to create such chances here tonight. And it's difficult to remember a save that the goalkeeper Leipzig really had to make. And that will certainly please Alexander Strauss, the new coach of Bayern Munich, 46-year-old Norwegian. Only been in post since June. Left Sandviken Brand in his native Norway to take up the role here at Bayern Munich. Will be impressive what he's seen from his players so far. Six and a half minutes to play here in the south of France. Assistance there from Lucy Staniforth, forced the corner. There was a nice pass from Hannah Blundell as well. Obviously switched across onto the right hand side. <laughs> Plenty to think about for Mark Skinner. It's a rare United corner that Zellum won't be taking. Driven in. Dalton is up there. Comes here for Thomas. He's kept in play. Here's Dalton. Headed out by Kumagai. And on again. Picked up by Letizia. for Manchester United chance here for Bayern Munich to come forward but easily repelled in the end Welsh international Hayley Ladd on the pitch as a substitute can play central midfield or at centre back in fact she's someone who's looked very accomplished at centre back having played the last few years largely as a central midfielder Three goals down in this pre-season tournament. This is the final of the competition. Only a mini tournament, really, involving four teams, Bayern, United, PSG and Barcelona. I'm sure Mark Skinner would have taken away some valuable lessons from this game. Well, 
certainly from well from the whole tournament. I mean, they've, they've beaten a, a really good side in in PSG, uh, but they've come unstuck against a very well organised, very methodical Bayern Munich team. And these are the. Well, it would have been good for the fitness because they've done <laughs> they have done a lot of running and a lot of chasing because of how well Bayern Munich have have moved the ball around. So you know they're going to be there's going to be plus points that come out of the game. Forget about the result. Yes, it's disappointing, and they're not going to take a trophy home. But it's all about fitness. It's all about making sure people get minutes on the pitch. It's all about making sure people come through with those minutes, however many they get unscathed, um, so that he can move forward and, and keep building for the start of the new season. Very important not to lose sight of that. Zellum's free kick. Well, it's headed goalwards, a loopy one, and a drift harmlessly wide of the post in the end. Well, Zellum's delivery is always dangerous. Again, Kumagai showing her experience up against someone who's particularly experienced for a teenager in Maya Letizia. Well, she's 20 years of age now, but most WSL appearances as a teenager can be accredited to Maya Letizia certainly doesn't play like somebody who's only 20 years of age. I think she's looked very accomplished in the two games during this pre-season tournament. These are the real maturity. And that's left well and Laurent's pass will be latched onto here by Kvin. The best cutback. She's been lively, Kvin, since she came on. She really has. Skinner will be very happy with the the squad that he's he's managed to put together. Yeah, certainly lots of talent in there. Yeah. This is Berisa for Manchester United. Now Zellum. Might just be kept in by Thomas. They've managed to get the delivery in and now eventually the, the flag goes up. Referee's just going to play on here, though. Yeah. Let's not make too big a deal out of it. With a minute to go, plus stoppage.
coming to obviously the last bit. Oh no, that's it. I wish him all the best for the season though. Well, a couple of months ago at Wembley, it was England against Germany and England came out on top. Manchester United representation in those Lionesses, but now in pre-season, Munich against Manchester and the Germans victorious comfortably on this occasion. They take home the silverware, they win the Amos Women's French Cup. Manchester United just undone by a better side on the night. Bayern Munich deserved winners here in pre-season. They've beaten Manchester United by three goals to nil. evening for Mark Skinner's side going down by three goals to nil uh, against Bayern Munich and it's the Germans who lift the Amos Cup over in France but it is of course a pre-season friendly and more important than the result is uh, minutes in the legs of the United players as we head towards the opening of the WSL season uh, remember that begins 10th 11th September and that weekend with United away at Spurs, so a uh, tough opening for Mark Skinner's side. But uh, that match will help them in their preparation. And yes, we wanted the win, we wanted to lift the trophy, David. But um, ultimately, it is a pre-season friendly match and there are more important factors. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's, I think it's a really good game for, for the women's team um, to play against the top team. Um, who were well organised, they offered something different than maybe you would face uh, week in, week out in the league. Um, I thought they were one of the most organised teams I've seen, but also were able to build through the lines and break with numbers and get support and cause United a lot of problems throughout the whole game. So tactically I thought they were very good as well. 
so yeah um, from United's point of view uh, good fitness exercise good tactical exercise and hopefully no injuries so um, so yeah apart from the result um, I'm sure it was, a, it was a worthy night and a good good one for pre-season yeah hopefully no injuries like you say um, but we will have a look at the goals and it was the goals either side of half time which really proved United's undoing um, one right at the end of the first half um, Bill with it and it was a keeper mistake Sophie Bagley had just made a brilliant save then uh, lets this one spill through her hands into the net it's unfortunate error yeah it was you know she'll be disappointed with it but the build up play was something typical that we saw throughout the first half from uh, from Bayern uh, as I mentioned previously that the, the two wide forward players were dropping in those little pockets um, either side of the midfielder um, and were getting free and causing United problems when they cut inside maybe the defender wants to keep them on the outside um, but yeah the keeper would be disappointed with that one yeah ordinarily she saves them uh, pretty much every time um, but that was just before half time so they went in at the break trailing by a goal to nil and the Germans doubled their advantage just after the restart uh, like I said either side of half time real bad times to concede uh, Mughal with this one and the captain near post header um, which actually bounces off the post and off Bagley into the back of the net. If this were a Premier League game, I guess that would probably go down as an own goal against the keeper. Yeah, um, it was good build-up play again from from Bayern. I thought United started off quite brightly, and you know I thought their shape was a bit better than the way they pressed. But anyway, you, uh, Bayern had a good move there and um, good header really, angled it well keeper may be a bit disappointed but again it was just a, just an example of how Bayern with their good build up play were able to cut through United a number of times tonight and she ran right across it as a good forwards run wasn't it running across that near post across the front of the centre back yeah that's exactly what you want from your forward players when there's anyone crossing you want the front post always to be covered that's what we always say to you you know your players that you always need a striker across that front post who's willing to make that run it causes problems and there obviously she got the goal yeah so that doubled their advantage uh, there was a third goal for Bayern Munich as well to uh, complete the score and put the game beyond Manchester United and it was worthy wasn't it of the, their performance really to to make it three from the set piece um, and it was the veteran Japanese with the goal Kumagai uh, there at the far post to stab it in yeah, disappointed from a United point of view in terms of the set piece and particularly the second ball. Um, it just dropping into the into the far post there. You know, good anticipation from the Bayern players, but from a United point of view, you'd like to be able to, you know, deal with that. So that's another good learning learning curve for them in this game in terms of just sorting those habits out for when the when the season starts. Yeah. Um Another bright spot there was to see Ella Toon in action again after her successful summer. Um, the uh, Lionesses gradually making their way back into that squad ahead yeah. of the new season. So for Toon to get some minutes is good. Yeah, it's good. Um, always, you know, it's always a bit disjointed in pre-season when international players have got an extended break um, and then they come into the squad. They need to get up to speed because the season's not too long away. Um, but yeah, she had a few moments as well, which uh, showed her quality. We know she's got great quality, and um, yeah, it'd be you know great to see her up to speed soon and in action in in the upcoming league games. Yeah, Mary Herbs and Lester Russo, I'm sure, will be back fairly soon as well. Um, but we can't really uh, be too disappointed about that. Ultimately, like we said, it's building towards that new campaign, and with the new players getting more minutes on the pitch and the squad spending this extended time away together that's going to help them build towards the season opener I guess and as a veteran of many a pre-season you'll know more than most how important it is that you get this time right. Mm, it's vital and um, yeah you, you'll definitely see the, the benefits of when you go away you get more time, more pitch time, the coach has more, more time with the players on the pitch usually, um, you get that bonding time off the pitch and to integrate the new players. Um, and I'm sure with these new players you'll see you know an improved team from last year um, it's just about you know getting the squad up to speed in pre-season get the international players back in as quickly as possible and 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 start to build for that first you know important game in the league yeah can't wait for that um, but there was the under 21 game to look back on as well the under 21s in action tonight they played Everton and with the match report for us it's Ben Ibsen 
Yeah, so it's full time here in Southport. After a thrilling game of football, it's ended level between Manchester United, under 21s, and Everton. It took just 10 minutes for United to open the scoring through Mark Urado, who chested the ball into the box and finished with the outside of his boot. 15 minutes later, United then doubled their lead after a fantastic pass from Maynou found Hansen Aaron, who showed his class with a skillful finish. However, Everton turned it on and responded instantly through this cannon from Ton Cannon. Just before half-time, Everton got the equaliser through Cannon once more, who rose highest to meet Mackenzie Hunt's cross. After a slightly less dramatic second half, it finished Everton 2, Manchester United 2. Ben, he's been uh, reading this the tour or something. Can't even say that word. He's been reading it. But 2-2 uh, two -two for the 21s uh, under the guidance of Mark Dempsey now with uh, your mate Paul McShane helping out. And a uh, first point of the season, they, they, it was a tough game at Arsenal on the opening day. Um, and then they sort of fell apart against Palace in the last game. So to get that point on the board is important for them going forward. Yeah, it is, of course. At that level, it is about development and trying to get players um, into the first team. Um, but as a team, yeah, it'd be great for them to, you know, get that get that first point. Disappointing to to lose a two-goal lead, but against you know an Everton side away away at Everton, they're always very difficult. I always used to remember playing against them. They're always very very well organised, physical team, and um, yeah, it's always a difficult game. So um, you know to come. We've seen in recent years as well that how organised they can be. Um, it's something they, Everton in their academy seem to be really good at in terms of structure and organisation. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good point, something for United to build on for the next game. Hopefully, um, we didn't see the game tonight, but obviously, hopefully the performance was of a decent level and, and something they can build on in the upcoming games. Yeah, we looked at the team um, news, didn't we? And it, it was a young United's team. I mean... The age brackets change anyway this mm. season, that's from 23s to 21s. Even with that in mind, United fielded a young team with the likes of Fredrickson and, and Gore, players like this, you know, part of that FA Youth Cup team from last season. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a step up, I'm imagining, from youth football to reserve games. Yeah, it is, and especially at the start of the season, they're transitioning, they're going up the level, like you said, so it'll take a bit of time for them to bed into the level, get used to what's expected and, and the level, the, the standard, really. Yeah. Um, more physicality, you know, closer to men's football, and, and you do play against older players who are maybe further in their development and maybe against players that have played first-team games. So, you know, first, uh, first three games, hopefully the performances are, are getting better and better, and you'll see you'll definitely see it i think a vast improvement as the season goes on as we always do from united players the development at this kind of age from 18 to 19 there's a big you know physicality difference i always feel at united we have really technical players but are maybe a tad bit slower and get into those that physical level for men's football and i think you see a very big difference from the start of the season to the end yeah hopefully they can develop continue to build on that youth cup success which was a uh, brilliant result last season wasn't it to win that and those players will be riding on that wave into the the new season and hopefully um, they will continue to to develop and ultimately we want to get players into our first team but for those players it's all about their personal journeys as well and hopefully we'll see them continue to to grow yeah of course um, that's the thing it's a, last year was about when you're playing the youth cup to win the youth cup now they've done that um, now they want to kick on and build on that, uh, get, you know, play regularly in the 21s and um, hopefully get training with the first team and, you know, even sneaking appearances for the first team. So, mm. yeah, it's, it's a definitely winning the Youth Cup and play, doing well in that competition gives you a platform to move forward. OK, now, um, what should we talk about next? I know, Casemiro. Uh, because if you didn't see it earlier, then the news has been announced that the Brazilian will be joining us. We spoke about it a bit half-time, but let's chat about about it a bit more now while we hopefully wait some have some reaction from France um, but that sounds like a great bit of business for United doesn't it we said at half time how um, excited we were because he's a Brazilian international he's won 17 major trophies in his career been at Real Madrid nine years you don't stay there for nine years unless you're a good player at 30 years of age he seems to be in his prime so all in all sounds like it could be a fantastic uh, acquisition for the Reds certainly does and 
you know, I'm excited to see um, what it'll bring to the team. As you mentioned, vastly experienced, won pretty much everything in the game, um, played at a massive club um, for a number of years, internationally he's been playing, so yeah, you'd, you'd like to think that he's going to raise the levels of this um, of this current United squad. He seems like, a, you know, from reports and, and the way he goes about his game as a leader and a good character, and you know, you can never get enough of them in in a, in a team, and especially at a club like United, it's essential that you get those in your squad. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm I'm delighted, as I'm sure many other fans are, with with um, acquiring his services. Will it take him time to adjust? You think from La Liga to the Prem? Um, I think a I think it's probably understandable. Yeah, th there'll be a bit of bedding in period, and, but he is a quality player, and I'm sure quality players adapt very quickly. Um, and I'm sure he'll be eager to uh, to get on the pitch as soon as possible and to show his quality and uh, help the team uh, move forward this season. I guess it's a position we've been searching for a player for a while, haven't we? I mean, you've, we've all read the, all the reports linking us with various centre midfielders. Um, De Jong obviously has been pursued a lot this summer. Um, Rabio has been mentioned. You've heard names like Milinkovic, Savic, a lot of different names mentioned. Yeah. That always happens at United, I'm guessing. But Casemiro is um, a top, top class player. He is, and um, it's such a vital position. Yeah. And United are always one that's been searching for that position. You know, it go, comes in cycles, doesn't it, with great players that we've had at this club. Um, you know, midfielders historically, and you know we've had top players in recent years, such as Carrick. You know, not too long ago, um, and he, you know, can hopefully fill that void and that quality that a player like that and the impact that he had that would be you know fantastic so um, he's got all the qualities um, and I'm excited about seeing him play and um, I'm sure he can definitely help this current group of players to, to raise the levels and to help the team and um, yeah he's got a lot to offer so uh, really good uh, really good signing for the club yeah let's hope we do get that over the line but it seems as though we will ok we can head back to France let's get some reaction shall we Zara is with Jade Moore so Jade, ending this game in defeat, but what do you take from this weekend to lose? A lot of positives, um, you know, that's our third game together as a whole team now. Um, we've only just got our internationals back, so there's loads of positives. We've enjoyed it, we've had a really good time in France, team bonding's been well, um, and we're looking forward to the season now. This is the beginning of that build up, build up momentum for the new season. And sometimes games like this, they're going to help you when the season first starts, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is why we wanted to come here. Mark set his stall out at the beginning of the week. He said he wants to take us out of our comfort zone. And I think that's this week's really, certainly done that for us. And for you personally, with the targets that you might have given yourself at the start of the week, do you think it's helped you this week come the end of it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we spent five days together as a brand new team, gelling, putting things to place. We've had two great oppositions to play against. And I think the performances have really showed what we're trying to put in place. Now, obviously, we need to take it one step further. I think we've got two more games before the season starts, and then we crack on. And now the hard work starts right here. What things do you think that the team needs to work on before then? Um, to be honest with you, it's a bit of a building process. There's a lot of positives that we take from this week. Um, you know, we want to score more goals. We want to concede less. So I think they're two, one of our two take-home messages from this week. But, you know, we've only played three games together. So we have to build on this momentum. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll gel together as a team. I think this has really, really been a really good benchmark for us. So. Well, thank you very much. Well done, Jade. And it is a... The benchmark, I mean, PSG and Bayern, two top teams to test uh, themselves against, so uh, they will have learnt a lot, no doubt. Um, just a couple of uh, things to finish, uh, David. We've got two games coming up over the next few days on MUTV. First, we've got the A-teams tomorrow morning, um, which you can watch with us live. Um, but then our attention turns to Liverpool here Monday night. Um, strangely, we could win. We could win. You can win any game that's mm. uh, put in front of you. If we do, we go above them. Mm. So is that the mentality to have? Positive mindset? Let's go and beat Liverpool, despite all the punters and all the bookies making us odds against to do so, mm. but just go and actually perform for the amazing fans we have here. Yeah, of course. Um, it's it's going to be a difficult game, as it always is against Liverpool, regardless of how well you're doing or how well Liverpool are doing. So it's always going to be a tough game. Um, but certainly United have do have the quality. 
uh, to be able to trouble them and yeah, you're just looking for a great atmosphere here, yeah. uh, the players are up for it, give it everything they've got and let's see where we are at the end of the 90 minutes, hopefully uh, with some, with well, three points. Yeah, it could be any kind of game, you never know, you just want to see the players just being aggressive, tackling hard, you know, flying into those tackles, making a proper battle of it. Yeah, the, historically the games against Liverpool are high energy games and, um, you know, fans, well, as fans, we really, you know, get up for those games and, um, and yeah, want to see high energy performance from the players and, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure the, there's a lot of top professionals, internationals here and I'm sure we'll get that performance. Let's hope so. Uh, on that note, it's a good one to finish on. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.